Good afternoon. This is Bridget Ford at Global Evangelistic Ministries. Welcome to our time of worship. And I'd like to encourage you to enjoy to join me. If you know the songs, please feel free to sing them with me. Amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, 
The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Eldridge Ford. Thank you for joining us for another Sunday afternoon worship service. We're so glad to be here with you. Even as we prepare our hearts, let's go into a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord Jesus. We say thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done this week, oh God. We thank you for your hand being on us, Lord God. We thank you for your protection that you've given us, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we've woke up to see another day. Amen. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you so dearly, Lord God, because without you, Lord God, if you had not been on our side, we don't know what we would have done. God, there were moments and times that we found ourselves in, in experiences that we knew not how we would come out of. We knew not exactly what next would take place, but you were there with us even in those moments. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we would actually begin to, at this time, begin to receive the encouragement to walk together in agreement. God, I pray, Lord God, at this time, Father, that we would begin to, to, to acknowledge, Lord God, that which uh, happens when unity takes place, Father. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we would find ourselves, giving ourselves completely over to learning sometimes a new way of family, learning a new way of actually understanding community, understanding who we are and what it is that you desire to do amongst the body of believers. God, there are so many people that, 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 that they, they, they're isolated and they're separated and they do not allow themselves to come together. They do not allow themselves to walk together with, in, with agreement with others. But God, this afternoon, I'm praying that encouragement will come, that we need one another. Oh, God, there's a saying that they had that, that says that we're stronger together. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, that we would believe those words yes. and that we would walk together. Yes. But not only walk together, Father, because we can walk together and be divided, but that we would walk together and agree. Yes. I say thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even at this time, this, this morning, I, 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 my heart is, is, is excited because the Lord, he's, he's faithful in so many different ways. I've actually, um, at different times in life, had different experiences. Um, I've, had, I've had experiences with family members and uh, uh, loved ones that, that at times they had been so far from home for so long that when they came home, they began to act as they would as if strangers were present. Um, today, I want to encourage somebody. I want to help somebody. I want somebody to, to rethink the picture because everybody's picture of family and everybody's picture of community does not look the same. Uh, we have different struggles. We have different things that we've seen, and especially during this time right now when things seem all, so unpredictable. Uh, when when, when, when we, we're not sure whether we're going to stay as we are or we're going to go back to doing what we had to do before or, or whether we're going to continue to go forward or we're going to take three steps backwards, I, I want to encourage somebody today that, that we stay connected, that we stay connected in a way as never before. Yes. Amen? I, I, I want to talk about some of the benefits to having a family and to living in community. Well, one of the things uh, we, I, I had the, uh, the privilege of actually performing a funeral last week. Uh, the young man, and you say privilege, uh, because I know that he's not suffering anymore. The young man, he actually, he was 17 years old. And one of the things that he talked about, we talked about family. He said, he said you know, uh, when you're around family, you can be yourself. Amen. 
There's a security of actually knowing who you are. There's a security of knowing your identity. There's a security of, of, of actually being able to let your hair down, so to speak. Um, uh, if I was to talk about another benefit of family, it would be support. There is support. There is support. I remember one time when I started a, a business, I had a business, I had a cleaning business and I was going out to work and, and uh, I didn't have any employees. And so the people that signed up was my mama and my grandmama. <laughs> I said, well, 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 I gotta pay them good. I gotta pay them good. I can't shortchange them. I gotta take care of them. And they went with me to this hard, rugged job. I tell you, they didn't know what we was getting into. I didn't know what we was getting into. I probably would have said, not today, mama, not today. But they went, right? <laughs> and they were there with me. You get in family support. Another thing that we gather from family is wisdom. Some things you don't have to learn from the school of hard knocks. Some things, some trouble, some problems can be told to you and you can learn from just listening. But there's wisdom in being family. One of the things that we often experience when we find ourselves getting closer to family and, and working with family is we're not alone. Sometimes you just need to know that somebody got your back, somebody thinking about me, somebody care about me, that I'm not alone. Many people right now, they're experiencing times that, 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 that loneliness is sweeping, isolation. People are, 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 are so distant, and, and, and even with phones, we, we're, we're concerned that we might catch the sickness over a phone call. No, you won't catch it. Call your loved ones. Reach out to those that you haven't spoken to in a while. Let them know they're not alone. Family brings about the next thought, safety. When you're with family, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what the trouble is. I don't care how big the, the struggle may be. Safety, there is safety. When we find ourselves walking in family. Family also brings about the idea of provision. That which we need, some things we will not have to worry about. I remember one point in time, my son, uh, he ended up uh, I, I bought him all his school supplies and he went to school and, and he began to sell his school supplies. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> well, maybe he was worried about provision, right? It, or maybe he didn't recognize where they really came from, right? The daddy bought them, but he was selling them. He was trying to make a little business income, right? <laughs> to make sure he had his candy bars and his suckers together, amen? The teacher had to call me and they said, wait a minute. He, he had set up a store and he had put a piece of paper on his desk and he taped it to his desk and it was Iman's Dollar Tree. <laughs> and you can come and get what you need. Oh. oh, yeah. One of the things that we experience with family is stability. Yeah, everything is not rocky. Do you know in family things will get rough? Things will get hard. Things will shake and we will tremble. But literally, we always end up stable right we have a we have a landing pad that we can land on that that everything will not just go and continue to remain turbulent but there's stability and another thing that we receive when we actually find ourselves submitting to the idea of family is we find strength mm -hmm. there yeah. is strength it may not be your particular strength, but there is strength. Somebody got some strength for you. Somebody has some hope for you. Somebody has some, some vision for you. Somebody has some ideas for you. There is strength. I remember uh, at times, and please forgive me for talking about my mama today, but I got to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, I said, Mom, I got this business and I can't afford to hire no one. She said, well, you cannot afford not to hire anyone, so you must hire someone. Amen. She gave me confidence. In strength. There were things that I, ideas, I had big ideas. I always got big ideas. Please forgive me, my wife, she's learning now. I got big ideas all the time, right? I got all these big ideas and, 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 and sometimes I would have these big ideas and I would pronounce them out loud. This is what I'm going to do. And then after a while you start thinking, no. <laughs> to myself, no, we maybe not going to do that. 
And she'll come back and say, what about that thing that you said you was going to do? <laughs> she will remind me that it was good. There's strength. That when I didn't have strength to believe, someone else and family would have strength to believe with me. Two more points. Uh, we actually, when we actually walk in family, what we find ourselves is we find ourselves walking in oneness. Mm -hmm. I know every family is not like that. I know everybody is, is, is some families now at this time, are especially are ex 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 estranged. They're, 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 they're separated and, and, and they're not talking to one another. And they're not, they're not, they're not communicating as they should, but, but I, I'm giving you a picture of what family should be because sometimes we haven't seen this picture and sometimes we have and we need to remember and just hold on so this is the image that we should be looking at and one of the greatest things that we find in family is help in trouble when trouble comes there is help well, I want to I want to uh, encourage you today that that the church is a family. Yes, amen. The, the the body of Christ is a community, and all those things that I just said that you gather from actually receiving a family. If you don't have a father, uh, you actually you and if you don't have a mother or if you don't have a brother, if you don't have a sister, then basically you can come to the house of the Lord and you can actually find. Family. If anybody ever asked you or if anybody ever said, do you have someone to talk to? You should be able to say yes, because the church is a place where you can come and talk. If anybody ever asked the question, uh, do you have family? You should be able to say yes, because when you're connected, the church is a family. Did you not know that that was what the church was based on, what the church was built up on? It was built up of families, one family building, and actually the church became from families. It was instituted on families. And so what happens is even in this time right now, there is a need even more than ever before for us to be family. You know, you know, the more that we learn, the more that we think about these things, things should really become simpler. We should find ourselves getting back to the basics, right? I, I know that everything is changing around us. Even now, I'm, 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 I'm live. I'm streaming, right, and talking to a community in front of me. But, but things should become more simpler. And what, are the, what is the simplicity of it is, is that, that basically the church's mission has not changed. It is care, compassion. And the greatest love. Amen. Right? Uh, after we've done all the work, after we've done all the duties, well, that, that become, those are the basics. When we get back to the foundation of everything, that, that once we begin to love, who? My neighbor. Amen. How? Because I love myself. Thank you, Jesus. Then I'm able to do the work that God has called me to do Amen. as a family. Amen. Go with me now to the book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 41 through 47. we we'll do a little reading. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. And it, and it reads like this. I'm reading from the King James. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' decree, in fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Verse 46, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God 
and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Now, I, I want to encourage us that, that one of the things that we, we, we see that uh, is that the idea of social work started in the church. The, the church in this moment, what we see is, is that there was a situation that arose, that there were people that had come to the faith, people that had come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior. And what ended up happening was is that they found themselves in a need. And what the church did was they began to provide the need. I, 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 I beg to ask the question, what is the greatest gift that you can give someone at any given time? It's not the gift that you wanted to buy for them, right? <laughs> because oftentimes we have great ideas. <laughs> you need a, <laughs> and I'm gonna get it for you. But it's the gift that's needed at the moment. You understand? The very gift that they actually need, the very gift that, that is desired, the very gift that is needed for them to actually be able to do what they need to do. How do we find that out? Many times it is not easy. You may have to find yourself looking, listening, waiting until you find the gift that is needed. Amen. What was happening here? What was a little, little background? What was happening here? So if we went to, to uh, Matthew 18, 19. Come on, let's go to Matthew 18, 19. We're going we're gonna to jump around just a little bit. We're going to go to Matthew 18, 19. Because what we're talking about is, is that now we're seeing community. We're seeing people. They're coming together. And, and they're doing things. Matthew 18, 19. And we're going to read through 20. So what we see is, is that Jesus, 18, 19, Matthew 18, 19 through 20. And it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Now, this is actually oftentimes speaking on, oftentimes when we talk about this, we talk about the prayer of agreement, us coming into agreement. But if two or more uh, come together, touching upon anything in agreement, Jesus is saying that there is he in the midst. See, one of the things that Jesus was doing was he was looking to the future. He knew that there would come a day that physically he would not be present. Physically, he would not be present. And the task he would need is to leave behind instructions on how to deal with situations that would actually take place. Uh, the, the, the church would no longer be able to, 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 to look to him physically walk in the streets. And at this time, he was not looking for the multitudes. He was not looking at the thousands, but he was looking at the few. Sometimes we say that the job that we're setting out to do is too big, too large. We're too little. But Jesus, he entrusted the whole church, the whole vision of the church in the hands of a few men. Do you know that any good leader, they never give you anything that they don't believe that you can do before they give it to you? Even if you don't see it in yourself, even if you don't believe that you can do it yourself, literally any good leader, when they begin to give something to you, it's because they've already seen within you have the capacity to handle what they've given you. If I was to call this message anything today, I would call it a, a call to community. That there is a calling to community. There is a calling to coming together. There's a calling to gathering. And, and, and in this process, everybody's not going to gather the same way they used to gather, right? They're not doing it anymore. Some people are saying, I'll check you out online. And some people said, I'll come get with you physically. But literally, there is a call to coming together. 
but not just coming together because we can get a group of people to come together and they not be in agreement. But we want to come together and find ourselves walking together in unity. Jesus, what he was doing was he was look, he was expressing to his disciples that there was a need for agreement of two believers. If you just got two people together, if you could get two people to agree, to touch and agree. And I'm going to send my Holy Spirit and I'm going to let them do the rest. I'm going I'm to empower you. I'm going I'm to give you the strength you need to actually accomplish what you need to do. Amen. I know we're putting our mask back on and next month they may tell us to. I mean, we're taking our mask off and next month they may tell us to put them back on. Uh, we, we're, we're still social distancing and we're still some stores, some places are fully open and some places are somewhat open and. How do we do this in a time when social distancing or not social distancing or agreeing? And how, how do we do this? Well, you know, James, he encourages us. He says, he says in James 4, he says that one of the things that you're going to do if you're going to be part of this community, if you're going to be part of those that are, that are agreeing and standing together in the unity that, that, that is needed is you're going to have to first draw near to God. See, God's response to us is, is, is that we would actually come near to him. God has always desired for us to actually be in communion with him, to, to be close to him. He's always desired us. You know, it's, it's like a man wooing a woman. He, 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 and, not, and not to make God a man and not to make it less than, but, but the reality of it is, is that, that, that when a man is wooing a woman, I, I, I can say for myself, when, when, I, when I saw my wife, I, I saw her and I, and, I, and I stood from a distance and I kind of watched for a while to see. Then I thought about what would be appropriate and what would be inappropriate and, and I waited a little bit longer. Then I began to take in what she liked what she don't like, uh, more about what she like in the beginning, right? Because I, I didn't want to know about her dislikes. <laughs> but I began to take in more about what she liked. I began to listen. I began to hear. Because I wanted us to be in agreement. See, she didn't know my heart was pitter-pattering. She didn't know I was, I, was getting, I was getting all wrapped up and I was getting entangled uh, with, with just her beauty. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I wanted that when we came to talk that she would be in agreement. <laughs> See, the truth is there's never an issue. See, God, he's waiting. And, and there's, there, the truth is there's never an issue of God's willingness to give us his favor or his mercy. The issue is always that we must acknowledge him with our dependence. And remove anything within our hearts that will cause distance. Amen. This is the beginning of Christian community. This is the beginning of a uh, Christian family. This is that, that literally that we first draw near to God, that we first seek God. And then when we seek God, then we recognize that there are others around us that, that are like us and that, that, are do, that is doing the same thing. But first, our dependence, our acknowledgement. And our rejection of anything that will hinder us from being close to him must be dealt with. Second, we must humble ourselves before God. We must find ourselves, giving ourselves an opportunity to, 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 to come into a place where not thinking bad of ourselves, not putting our head down, not, uh, oh, woe is me, I am nothing, not that type of, uh, of, of, of humbleness, but the humility that says that I have the confidence that I can trust God. That even when I see others more than I see myself, when I see others better than myself, when I actually look to others to make sure that they're well, even before myself, that God will take care of me. See, we're to humble ourselves before our Heavenly Father. And the third thought is, is that we are not to speak evil one towards another. I don't care how bad situations get. I don't care how rough things become. That we make sure that we do not put our mouth on one another. Even if folks are speaking bad against you, you 
Keep silence. There's wisdom in silence. Sometimes when you don't say anything, you've said a mouthful. Uh, literally, when folks are talking about you, they're coming at you and trying to attack you, sometimes silence is a powerful moment. Amen. And sometimes you have to restrain yourself to keep silent. You hear me? You may have to go for a walk. <laughs> and, but listen, don't stay too long. Come back quick. Come back quick, don't go, don't go too long, you be gone, you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> you can't do it like that, you gotta go and say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I need to go for another walk. <laughs> I still feel a little something, I'll be back, right? And so what happens is, we wanna make sure that we don't speak evil one of another. We have to learn now how to be community again. We have to learn now how to like one another again because now what happens is, is in, in text messages and, and in chat rooms, we can say anything we desire against people and don't have to suffer the consequences because I'll never see you. <laughs> you're around the world. You're across the street. You're down the block and I'll never see you with my alias name, right? <laughs> Super fun madness uh, and just tell you off. But as believers and as community, we're to find ourselves in agreement. And Jesus was encouraging us that we're to find ourselves coming together, touching and agreeing. We're to seek the Lord's ways of handling conflict. We're to remain in agreement as a body of believers. Because our goal is, is to remain connected. I had, a, I had a conflict with a brother in Christ. The conflict happened. I came, I talked to him about it. And immediately he thought that I wanted to, no more friends, we're no more friends. We're, that's the end of it. Uh, we, I cut you off and we cut each other off. No! Amen. That's the time when we get a chance to see how strong our agreement is. No, let's talk about it. Let's reason with it. Let's work it out. Let's figure it out. Amen. We stayed on the line for two hours talking about it. How upset I was and, and how ready to give up the relationship he was. But the goal is to remain in agreement. Isn't that true with family? That you don't cut family off? Uh, so that, see, see, family with family, well, I think what, what oftentimes we might not have seen as a picture or image of family is, is that family love regardless. I love you when you're good. Yes. I love you when you're bad. <laughs> right? I, I, I still love you, right? That, that even if you don't do what I want you to do, even if you don't act like I want you to act, I still love you. I still care. That does not change the fact of us actually being family. And when we come into the household or the community of faith, what happens is we are family. And so even when you don't respond the way I want you to respond, and even if I'm responding the way that you don't want me to respond, please, let's stay together. Now, now we got to get back to where I started because I, I, I wanted to give you a little background that Jesus wanted us to be in agreement. He wanted us to touch and agree, right? And so now what we're looking at is Jesus has gone. He's no longer present. The disciples, they now find themselves left alone. Jesus was at one point in time leading the way, guiding them, showing them, teaching them, telling them what to do, how to do it, correcting them, exchanging ideas and thoughts with them, giving explanation for things that they did not understand. And now we come to Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. And what do we see here? We see that, the, that, that Jesus is no longer present. He's gone. But how do we live without him? Who's going to lead the way? Who's going to guide us? Who's going to share? Who's going who's to teach? What will be the outcome of what we're doing? It says that that day, 3,000 took Peter at his word. Peter stood up and he spoke to the people. Uh, they, they were, this, this was what they considered the day of Pentecost, that literally, uh, that, that literally there were uh, those that were gathered together. And some began to speak in languages that they had not learned and they were talking to, they, they were talking to strangers that they did not know and they, were, they could hear them speaking in another language but they were presenting the gospel to them. 
And so somebody came and said, are these men drunk? And he said, these guys are not drunk. These folks are not drunk. Literally, this is God's movement. God is doing it. He's doing something that, 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 uh, that goes beyond our education. He's doing something that goes beyond what we can put together. Because sometimes when we're actually working on things, God sometimes has to step into the midst. You, sometimes there, there's been situations in life where I tried to figure out how to make it happen. I did my marketing. I did my campaigning. I've set up and I've talked to the people. I've actually address the situation. I've actually tried to do this and I've tried to do that. And then literally you just need God to move. Amen. You need him to do something that you cannot do within your own strength. I remember I, in my business, I, I, I found myself that I was, I was campaigning. I was marketing. I was doing this. I had my employees. I had my staff. I was, I was setting them up. I was preparing them. I was giving them what they needed. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. Because I need more customers in order to continue to keep having more to take care of my staff. Mm -hmm. Then one day, for no reason whatsoever, my phone started ringing. And it was ringing. Have you ever had your phone ringing to the point that you don't know what to do with it? It's just ringing. You're like, hello, hey, I'm doing this. Hello, hey, I'm doing it. Hello, hey. And everybody was calling for a job. Everybody, it could, could, now listen, I was looking for customers. <laughs> but people began to call me for a job. I did not know what was happening for three days straight. They called, they called, they called, they called, they called, they called. And in the process, I was able to encourage people about a class that I was teaching concerning a job. And then I was able to meet customers in the midst of this. How did this happen? One of my employees came to work one day and he said, he said, you know, you gave me the day off. But I had a bunch of them flyers that you gave me. So I stood out on the corner and I told people, if you want a job, take one of these. <laughs> And it did it for hours. And what happened was the, the, it brought in what I needed. I needed something to happen that I could not do within my own strength. I needed God to move in a way that was beyond my ability. And what he did was he sent that young man. And he became my voice. He became my mouthpiece. So it says, it says in Acts uh, 41 uh, through 47, it says that day 3,000 uh, took him, took Peter at his word and were baptized and were signed up to the church. And what did they do? They committed themselves to the teachings of the apostles and a life together. They actually decided that they would actually have common meals together and that they would pray continually. Everyone around them was in awe. All those wonders and signs were done through the apostles and all the believers lived in a wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. There were others, they sold whatever they owned and they pulled everything together, all their resources, so that each person's need would be met. And they followed daily, a daily discipline of worship in the temple. And followed by meals at home, every meal was a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw every day because of what they did. The numbers grew as God added to those who were saved. What had happened was the disciples had gathered together as Jesus had instructed and waited for the outpouring of God's spirit. Even now, if we do the simple thing of gathering together, agreeing and trusting that God is gonna do the part that we cannot fix, that God is gonna heal the wounds of the past and he's gonna, he's gonna fix the, the indiscrepancies, he's gonna, he's gonna cause the arguments to cease, he's gonna cause us to live better together, He will. We just believe. However long that it would take for the spirit to pour out upon them, whatever that, that might look like, now God had poured out his spirit on them. They did not find themselves rushed to gather a large crowd or put together a massive marketing campaign to draw people. What they did do is remain consistent to the preaching message of repent, change your life, 
turn to God and be baptized. Each of you in the name of Jesus so that your sins are forgiven. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord coming upon the believers drew a lot of attention and people came. Now they would be responsible to care for these people. Just as Christ, the great shepherd had cared for them and his sheep. How would they do this? The Bible says that three, on that day, 3,000 people confessed and made an oath to the word of God and were baptized. Today, I want to express how the church grew and remained vital during a time of turmoil, constant change. The Bible gives clear steps of what the disciples did and, and, and how they brought about increase to the work of the ministry. The people had to come to Jerusalem because of the feast of Pentecost. But what the church did was they committed to the spiritual discipline that would cause spiritual growth. Someone may ask the question, do believers need to be spiritually disciplined today? Do we really need to stay together? Do we really need to, to, to hang out? Do we really need to know one another? Am I okay by myself? Can I just do me? You really need, we really need one another. The answer is yes. Do we need spiritual discipline? Do we need to be together? The answer is yes. Amen. You know why? Because life without spiritual discipline offers too many choices. We are an overload of information. Too much coming at us. We don't know what's right and what's wrong and don't even have the time to process what is actually wisdom. We need this discipline because the world is unpredictable. Don't you know that things are constantly changing and they will continue to change. Change is part of life. We all need direction. We all need discipline. Yeah. When we talk about discipline, discipline is not someone lording over you to, to, to bash you when you get into trouble or you do something wrong. But we need structure. We need direction. Spiritual dis discipline, what it does is it gives us a way to live a healthy life. But you don't do it alone. Consistently, what they did was they gathered together. They committed themselves to the apostles' teachings. What was the apostles' teachings? The teachings of Jesus. They taught Jesus' life. They taught the teachings that he taught. They taught the lessons that Jesus shared. They committed to a time of studying God's word and growing in it. The believers that were old and new needed to continually receive information from God's word on how to live. It is impossible to live without faith. Amen. Amen. That's who we are. They committed themselves to live together. They actually set their minds and said, listen, we're going to live together regardless. I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like who you are. But we're going to live together, right? And I'm going to learn to love you. <laughs> the Bible tells us to endure the brethren. Why would it tell us to endure one another if, <laughs> if there wasn't going to be a little sandpaper, right? <laughs> a little friction. They committed themselves to breaking of bread and common meals. They share with one another of their natural necessities. And my final point, they committed themselves to prayer continually. And they did not cease. Even now, I believe that as those that are watching under the sound of my voice, it is a calling. You're being called. You're, God is, is, is leading you. God is saying that you must be a part of community. 
for those that are capable of leading community. There's a calling that you organize and set and put things in place. Amen. There is a need. The time is now. But the key to doing it is we must do it with love. If we do it with any other motivation, any other goal, we may find ourselves going against the very core purpose of what we're trying to do. Let me go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for causing us to be a people that learn to live together, that learn to love one another, that learn to accept diversity, to forgive quickly, to stay committed, not always seeking what is my value of this relationship, but looking to give. Help us, Lord. Even now, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to speak to your heart. I believe that the Lord is going to encourage you to, to, to whatever your situation and your circumstance may be, whether you may find yourself without family or you may find yourself in a situation where a predicament where things are not going as they should and, and you would like things to be better. I believe that even if your situation does not change immediately, God will change your perspective. He will change your way of thinking. He'll change your thought process, even at this time, to help you to come into a better place. Will you re repeat this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive my salvation now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray one more prayer for you. Heavenly Father, I come before you now, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that those that prayed that prayer, Father, that you would, to, you would cause them, Lord Jesus, to, to grow in the faith. Yes. You would cause them, Lord God, to continue, oh God. Yes. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would gather us together. Yes. We don't all have to be in the same building. We don't all have to be in the same room, but gather us together, Lord. Yes. Cause us to know, Lord God, that we're not alone. Cause us to commit to a family, Lord God. Cause us to commit to a, to a body, Lord God, a community, Lord God, to say that this is what I'm working towards. Sometimes, Lord, we're looking for the big things. We're looking for the great things. But what you commanded is if we be faithful in a few things, just be faithful in the little things, that you would cause us to rule over many things. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause the working of your spirit to touch the lives of your people. Send change into their homes, Lord God. Send peace, oh God, that goes beyond understanding. God, a peace, Lord God, where they know that they should be upset, but literally the peace of God would rest in their homes. Yes. People are uneasy and at unrest. Give them what they need, oh God. Give them strength. Inspire them. We say thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And for those of you who prayed that prayer, because I know you prayed that prayer, 
Listen, uh, uh, the, the Bible talks about the angels in heaven rejoice, right? And so all I can say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. All heaven rejoice. Two things I want to encourage you about. The first thing I want to encourage you about is you've got to get you a Bible. This, oh, it's impossible to do this without a Bible. you got to get you a Bible. Listen, I want you to get you a Bible. And let the and it just begin to take in God's word, begin to read it, right? You say, What do I read, Pastor? I want to encourage you to read the Gospels, amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want to encourage you to read the Gospels, amen, and just take it in. And if, if you say, I have trouble reading, I say, Then go, go to YouTube or somewhere and begin to listen to the Gospels, amen. Let it come on the inside, let it begin to wash you and cleanse you and cause you to be better, amen. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is don't do it alone. You don't have to do it alone, amen? There's too many people, there's too much uh, uh, good uh, uh, information uh, with others that, that, that are around you that are able to share with you. Please, don't do it alone. Amen. Reach out to us. Contact us. Let us know what, what is happening, what is taking place in your life. And then finally, I want to say God bless you and keep you. And may he continue to cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.